Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Guilds of Ravnica Draft here on the channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. And before I begin, I do want to say that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to get updates for whenever I post new content and leave a comment uh, with your thoughts on the video. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the pack. Also, I do want to give a shout out to like my international audience. I know that uh, a lot of viewers are from America, but there's a lot of viewers from other countries, so... Um, yeah, thanks. If you're watching from overseas, maybe leave a comment where you're from and uh, all that cool stuff, because I think it's really interesting to see that we have a pretty international audience here on the channel. But yeah, let's get into the pack here. Pell Collector is not really a good rare in Limited. You just can't c consistently guarantee a curve out where this card's going to be great. Um, it's like mediocre. And the problem with cards like this is if you top deck it later in the game, it's just dead. Um, the card that stands out to me in this pack is Direct Current and League Guild Mage. League Guild Mage... Uh, there's a nice card sync, but I think I'm actually just going to take the direct current. Uh, League Guild Mage is very expensive and clunky to use, and I think the best decks in this format are very low to the ground and uh, just utilize uh, cards like direct current very well. Uh, that being said, Chemist's Insight is one of the better payoffs for being a control deck. Um, if I took Chemist's Insight, I would be no, by no means be committed to a red-blue deck, though that is a fine direction to go. I also think Watcher in the Mist is pretty good, though I am a little bit lower on it just because I have been enjoying drafting the hyper-aggressive decks that rely on 1-drops, 2-drops, and 3-drops to just overpower the opponent. I think that's a archetype that people aren't really aware of as much, so they don't try to take the cards for it, so it's easier to get into that deck, and that deck is pretty strong. Artful Takedown is also good. 4-mana uh, removal speed, spell at instant speed, and if you're in a racing situation, it can just be huge. Goblin Electromancer is pretty good, but I think I would take Chemistry's Insight. I think... Uh, the pick here is between Watcher, Artful Takedown, and Chemistry's Insight. Electromancer's after that. The Mythic here is unplayable. What do I take? I'm going to take the Chemistry's Insight. I think it just gives control decks a lot of viability. And it. I'm not necessarily committing to is it here. Uh, just based on these two picks, I could definitely still go into a lot of different directions because I don't have to play both these cards in the same deck, but if I do end up in an Is It deck, that's a pretty good start. That being said, there isn't really... I, th I don't think Pistons Fist Cyclops is insane. I think it's like a fine role player in the Is It decks, but not being able to attack every turn is a huge downside because you can't always enable it, uh, which can be uh, pretty harmful. I do want to spend a second talking about Muse Drake. I don't think this card's very good. This is like one of my big things uh, with the format. Uh, one of my big takeaways is I just don't think Muse Drake is super strong because its body is just too small to be relevant. And I think that if you're playing against any deck that's aggressive and you're tapping four mana to deploy a 1-3 on turn four, you're just going to get run over. So I don't think Muse Drake's very good. I think you can side it in against Demir as like a two-for-one creature, but it's still not that good. Just having one power makes it not an effective attacker, and it doesn't really use its flying very well. Uh, Mission Briefing's not really super great. I think I'm actually going to take Darkblade Agent in this pack. It might seem a little bit odd, but Darkblade Agent is really strong. It pretty much... Demands a block. It can run away with the games. And I don't think Mission Briefing is very good. Especially when a lot of your cards already have uh, Jump Start. You don't really need to be using Mission Briefing. And Mission Briefing is very unreliable. Because when Mission Briefing is bad, it's just a straight dead card. And But when it's good, it can actually do a lot of good work. Uh, I mean, it can do like decent work. Like The upside on Mission Briefing isn't insanely high. But the downside is definitely very low. Okay, so looking at this pack... I think we're definitely seeing good blue signals. Sinister Sabotage is a nice uncommon. Watcher in the Mist is very good. I, I've been pretty low on Dazzling Lights, but it does work very well with Darkblade Agent because you can give it Death Touch at instant speed and make it so the other creature doesn't trade. So if you have enough Darkblade Agent, it's quite nice. Uh, Gate isn't really even factoring in because I think that it's between Sinister Sabotage and Watcher in the Mist as just two powerful cards. And... Uh, yeah, one thing to consider is that Sabotage works nicely with Chemistry's Insight because you can hold up both. That being said, I am just going to take the Watcher in the Mist. It's a solid win condition for these Demir decks, and I still could just transfer into Is It, uh, looking like a being more of a controlling Is It deck rather than the super aggressive ones. For example, uh, a lot of Is It decks would like to play Sonic Assault. Uh, the aggressive decks, they go 2-drop into 3-drop into 4-drop into Sonic Assault, and they're just in very good a very good position. Uh, but this is looking like a more controlling is it version where Command the Storm would be better. Uh, invert Invent is a card that I think is unplayable. The Invert part just doesn't really do a lot in many situations, which I have found to be uh, pretty bad. So, uh, And the Invent part, I never have time to cast it. It's just too clunky. So I think this card might be fine in Sealed, but in Draft, it's just really bad, I think. Command the Storm is looking like a pick for me here. It's just the best card in the pack. 
other than Sonic Assault, but I'm not looking like a Sonic Assault is it deck. Uh, and I could just be a Demir deck that wants to splash red for maybe one or two removal spells if I need to. Okay, so this this pack is very nice. Thought Erasure is a nice card, but I think it's worse than Whisper Agent. One of the things that I like about Whisper Agent is the synergy with Dark Blade Agent because you can attack with Dark Blade Agent, they go no blocks, or they do do a block, and then you whisp, flash in Whisper Agent, which is really nice. Whisper Agent just is a nice card to be able to hold up. Works nicely with Chemister's Insight. It, it is flexible because I could end up in Is It or Demir uh, and still play Whisper Agent. I think it's good good enough to play in a deck that either only has one of the colors. Uh, Devious Cover Up is a card that is surprisingly solid in the format. I think if the more controlling you are, the more you want a Devious Cover Up because as the game goes long, you want to be able to stop your opponent's strong rares before they hit the battlefield. Uh, but I'm going to take the Whisper Agent here. I think next pick would probably be the Thought Erasure here. I'm not looking like I'm going to be playing white here. I don't think Cosmetronic Wave is incredible. And uh, I'm not sure exactly on my second color yet. Uh, it's, right now, it's looking like I'm going to be either Demir or Red Blue. And I don't think there's a real convincing reason to move off of that. But th something could definitely happen. Okay, so here, uh, Fire Urchin. I don't think this card's very good, especially in a deck that doesn't look... like. Strange as it might seem, the 1-3 is not really even good in defensive decks because defensive decks really want ways to trade with creatures because if you don't trade with their creatures, eventually the creatures are going to get mentored up. Here, the pick, I think, is between Never Happened and Mesmerist. Uh, if you've been a longtime viewer of the uh, channel, you'll know that I'm pretty high on Vidalk and Mesmerist, uh, so I think I am going to take it here. Also, I'm not sure I'm playing Black yet. Never Happened is more of a sideboard card. I only really ever sided in against... Um, the Demir Mirror match usually. That's usually when I side in never happens. Sometimes I'll side it in if they have an, a very strong bomb in a Golgari deck, uh, like a uh, Izoni, but usually I'm not siding it in. Not, that being said, I'm not super happy to play a Vidalcan Mesmerist in my Demir control deck, but I could still transfer into more of a like mid rangey deck, and Vidalcan Mesmerist definitely has its merits. If, if, if I haven't described, if you haven't heard my description of why I think this card's good, uh, I think that it just does a lot. It makes it very hard for the opponents to block, and if you ever have multiples of this card, they're basically never blocking. Uh, in this pack, I'm going to take the Devious Cover-Up. I'm not sure I'm going to be playing a Rebel Pelt Bore-type deck, and having access to a Devious Cover-Up could be quite nice. Um, the, the deck could still end up in a black-blue shell. I only picked up, I picked up this card first, so it doesn't really mean that red's open. Command the Storm is a bit later. I could always splash the Command the Storm if I really need removal. And Dark Blade Agent is, like, fine. But I definitely think blue is flowing, so I'm going to try and take blue cards if I can. Devious Cover-Up is a fine pickup to that end. Uh, I don't think Leapfrog is very good in this type of deck. That being said, I don't think Barrier Bones is very good either, so I am going to take the Leapfrog, hopefully not play it. And this pick, this pack is pretty empty. I'm not really looking to take a Locket here because I'm not playing White. I, I don't think Hammer Dropper is very good. Uh, I, I know I'm not playing Boros, but even if I was Boros, I wouldn't, like, I'd be hoping not to play Hammer Dropper. It just trades with too many things. It dies to a Direct Current as a 4-drop. It just doesn't do a ton. I don't think Circuitous Root is very good. I'm just going to take an Is It Locket. Maybe I'll have a higher enough curve that I need it, and maybe I'll need like play Command the Storm. Um, ooh, pretty nice to get a Disdainful Stroke. I don't mind main decking one copy of Disdainful Stroke. Most people uh, construct their uh, even their aggressive decks with a couple four drops, and just this is just a pretty nice mana advantage. It, the more instants you have in your deck, the better other instants get. That's just a general rule because you can be representing more things. So, for example, I, I never happened isn't really a consideration here, but yeah, back to the other thing. If if I for example if I have uh, four mana up. I could be representing Disdainful Stroke, Devious Cover Up, or Chemistry's Insight, and my or Whisper Agent. My opponent really doesn't know what to play what to play around. Here, I'm just gonna take the bats. Enhanced Surveillance is pretty much unplayable. Sometimes, like I don't even think you'd ever side it in. Like even if you might deck yourself. Here, we're gonna take a Pax Favor. We're never playing Mood Mark Painter and a Locket. I don't think the Locket's very playable, but so right now we're definitely blue. We're gonna sort by our curve now. We could be either red or black. Um, hard to say where we where we're gonna end up. And hopefully I can get the Mesmerist out of the deck. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting pack. I think Ionize is a fine card, but most of the time it's just going to be Cancel. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to be playing um, Red-Blue. So that's something to keep in mind. Vudalk and Mesmerist, just a solid card. I don't really want to take it here. Like, if I had to first pick a Mesmerist out of this pack, I'd be very disappointed. Uh, but it's really hard because I don't know exactly which colors I'm playing. I could be playing Red, or I could be playing Black. Not that the Bats is anything inspiring. I'm definitely playing blue, though. So, 
Uh, I don't think Radical Idea is what this de type of deck wants. I think Radical Idea's home is the is it decks that care about casting spells. So when you have things like Piston Fist, Cyclops, that can only attack if you've cast a spell, even just spells that replace themselves are just kind of nice. Uh, Demir Guildgate is a card I could consider, but I'm not even sure I'm playing Demir. It's tricky. Very tricky. Um, this isn't really looking like a good aggressive deck for a Mesmerist, and Mesmerist will probably wheel anyway. I think I'm going to take the Ionize. If it if I do end up uh, in is it it's going to be a little bit better than the Mesmerist, I think. I don't think I'm going to need to prioritize Mesmerist. It might come back anyway. Uh, that being said, I'm like not really happy to have to take an Ionize there. This pick is a little bit more interesting. Um, first of all, we notice the rare is missing, so we don't really see what the person to our left is in, but we can assume they're not in blue because we took like every good blue card. I think Ledev Champion is solid, but it's not as good as I first thought. Uh, getting up to five mana in this format to make a 1-1 and having that be like a fine play is very tricky to meet, check all those boxes. Demir Informant is fine, but not insane. I already have one Disdainful Stroke, and I don't like main decking multiple copies. I am a pretty big fan of Sure Strike, but mostly in decks that care a lot more about attacking than this deck looks to. Um, yeah, I'm going to put my blue cards over here and then my red cards. Yeah, that makes it a little easier to see. I'm counting this as a red card. Just the way I'm counting Dark Blade Agent as a black card. So yeah, this is another very bad pack. Not really clear what I'm supposed to take. I do think Glaive of the Guild Pack is playable in certain decks, but definitely not this one. I don't have enough creatures to make it worth it. I'm just going to take a Sure Strike, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm not really looking to play the Demir Informant deck. Watcher in the Mist is a nice pickup, though. It's just another nice win condition. I think that it's good for your decks to have three cards or so that are good in the late game, unless you're a very aggressive deck, because then you don't want to go to the late game. But this deck's going to do fine in the late game, so I have an inside. I have a couple Watcher in the Mists to do well in the late game scenarios. If this, if I wasn't taking the Watcher, I'd be taking the Passball Adept as the only other blue card. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out whether to be red or um, black. Here... Hmm. So Hired Poisoner, I think, is going to be better in this deck than Bedalkin Mesmerist, but I might not end up in black, and I might end up in a scenario where I can have a pretty aggressive Mesmerist deck, because maybe I'll wheel the first one that I passed up on, and then I'll end up in a uh, pretty nice deck. I think I'm going to take the Mesmerist, because I'm more likely to play it, and the Direct Current kind of pays me off, because that was the direction I was leaning. I don't want to play the Mesmerist in Demir, I don't think, but playing it in is, is it would be nice. Uh, Centipede's fine, but easy direct current here. This pack's pretty empty, but I guess we'll take the Fearless Halberdier. It's the only card we could consider playing. I think the best card in this pack is probably Gird for Battle. Gird for Battle is actually like quite nice in the super aggressive decks because you can just buff up two things. It helps you get through with your smaller creatures. Like if you have a 2-2 two -two in play and they play a 3-3, three -three, the 2-2 two is pretty irrelevant. Uh, but if then you play Gird for Battle, you get the counter onto the 2-2. Two -two. It can then trade. And then you have another creature that's a little bit bigger too, so that's pretty nice. It can also like buff up cards like Parhelion Patrol, and this card gets much better once it has a counter on it, so yeah. But we're going to take the uh, Fearless Halberdier. And now Fresh Face Recruit. It looks like our deck's ending up a lot more aggressive uh, than I first anticipated. The, the black cards just aren't really flowing. We, are, we have enough red cards at this point that we're going to be, definitely be playing Is It. Uh, looks like we're not playing Devious Cover-Up in this build. I don't, think, I don't like running more than two counters. Fresh Face Recruit is so much better than Goblin Locksmith. Hired Poisoner is better than Fresh Face Recruit, I think, in a lot of decks, but definitely not in this one. And next pick's the one where we see if the Mesmerist wields. I expect it to wield, but I don't think it should wield necessarily, um, especially because the first pack that we opened was pretty bad. Here we will take a Muse Drake. I hope not to play it, but sometimes you have to. And it didn't wield. People are learning, which is nice. People are getting better. They're realizing that the card's better. Um... I forget exactly what I took over it, but I'm feeling decent already. I took the Ionize. Ionize is going to end up pretty nice in this deck, too. So, um, yeah. Here, I guess we'll just take the Pax Fit. We'll just take Izzy Locket. We're not playing any of the Lockets, but don't really need to cut a Pax Favor. So, looks like our deck is more mid rangey. We might just play this guy. Um, probably not playing Leapfrog, but Devious Cover-Up could make its way into the deck. It's just a pretty medium deck. It's it's hard because I have some control elements and I have some aggressive elements. Uh, and ideally, I would just cut all the aggressive elements because they're, not, they're my weaker ones. The Mesmerists are like fine, but they don't really work well together. So ideally, the deck would look something like this right now. 
if I can just cut all those little aggressive elements. Uh, but it's going to be hard to get enough playables just because um, I haven't really been seeing a ton of strong cards, I don't think. Maybe I do play one Is It Locket. I might have to. I mean, I'm probably going to have to play some number of Mesmerists. Probably not going to play Leapfrog. I'd play a Mesmerist over Leapfrog for sure. But yeah, I think this deck is pretty nice. Um, definitely has some good elements. I've got a lot of instants, which are going to work very well together. And the Whisper Agent. Okie doke. So, hmm. A lot of really strong cards in this pack. This is actually a stacked pack uh, for every color that I'm not, which is kind of funny. Uh, Disinformation Campaign. I actually really dislike the fact that this card was made. Uh, this is a bit of a soapbox card for me. I just think it's very unfun. So, the games where you lose to this card are so miserable that it's unreal it also destroys the sealed environment in my opinion because if your deck if you play if you're playing sealed your deck is naturally slower uh, and the downside of a disinformation campaign is the aggressive decks but in sealed that's not a problem because you just play this card on turn three and you basically can't lose the game uh, after that so it's just really miserable to play against i think this card if it was going to be printed should have been a rare or should have cost four so that only like dedicated decks that could really like slow the game down would want it. I don't even think it should have been printed though. Knife of Predator is another one that's like that. I just really, it's hexproof is so annoying and it's like got death touch, so it's always going to trade with their guy. Um, I get that you're trying to make a blue blue black black cycle, but maybe make disinformation cam campaign your blue blue black black card. That could have been something. But yeah, we're going to take the Electromancer here. It's going to work great with all these instants we have. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty happy to get an Electromancer, but I was hoping to get it a little bit later than that. And wow, Lava Coil, that's a great, great card to get. Uh, very happy to see it. Also interesting that Conclave Cavalier got passed. Might be that we're going to see a bunch of Selesnya cards this pack, but we're definitely committed to our blue-red deck. But Lava Coil is excellent, so I'm very happy to see it. And uh, maybe pass will let up Wheel. That would be really nice. But, I mean, this pack is stacked. So uh, Conclave Cav let's just think about the next couple picks. I think Conclave Cavalier is better than Lava Coil, like pack one, pick one. But it might be that Lava Coil is better to take because it's one color. I think I would actually take Lava Coil over Conclave, especially because it's Belashable, but Cavalier's really good. I'm, eh, Conclave Cavalier is really good. Lidev Champion's pretty decent. Yeah, Passwater probably won't wheel, but this is a really nice pickup. Wow, Goblin Crater Maker. This control deck is really coming together. Deafening Clarion's interesting. It, it allows the deck to attack from a whole different angle, but I don't really have any fixers for white mana. Um, it does kill pretty much all of my creatures, too. And uh, I'm not looking like I can splash. So, for example, if this was early on, I might take the Definitely Clarion and try to get it. But I don't think I would even take it because Goblin Crater Maker is so good as well uh, that it's not really worth taking the Clarion. Wow, another Whisper Agent. This deck's really coming together. Um, not looking to play Fresh Face Recruits here. Dazzling Lights could be, like, isn't really good here, but it could make the cut maybe. Uh, Rebel Pelt Boar, probably not. But Whisper Agent's nice. And then a pretty blank pack. We're going to take the Fresh Face Recruit, but hopefully not have to play it. I mean, it's not like an unplayable card, but just doesn't really fit with what fit with what this deck is doing. Piston Fist Cyclops, it's just a fine defensive card. We don't want multiple devious cover-ups. We already have multiple counter spells. Sky Knight Legionnaire this late is quite surprising to see. I don't like Silent Dart, so we're just going to easily take the Piston Fist Cyclops here. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing else really close. Wow. Late Boros cards. Um, very late Boros cards. Sky Knight Legionnaire and Legion Guild Mage are both quite strong. Quite strong. I guess we're going to take... This deck might actually use Muse Drake decently, because it can keep the board pretty clear thanks to its early removal. But it doesn't really need card advantage either. But I guess we're just going to take it. Ooh, Smeltward Minotaur. Smeltward Minotaur is nice. Um, I think it's very inter it's a very good card. It lets you like get in with for some big attack later into the game. It's also just a fine defensive body. I think it's going to work out better than Wish Coin Crab overall, though. Um, the Crab is a fine card. I, I've played it. I think it actually might be better than Muse Drake, but I think uh, I'm going to take the Minotaur. And Vidalka Mesmerist came back. I'm not going to play the Boros Locket. Maybe I'll just end up with a couple of Mesmerists in this deck. Um, it's looking that way for sure. Definitely think Sure Strike's going to get in here. Barging Sergeant, not really what I want to be doing. I don't really like Maximize Altitude. 
in this deck either. So I guess I'm going to take the Barging Sergeant. Maybe I want some more late game power in certain matchups. I'll take a Leapfrog. Rope Pelt Boar is probably better than Muse Drake, so I'll probably take that. I don't need another Leapfrog anyway. I also think this deck could have a more aggressive tilt to it based on like the playables that I'm looking at. So like, look at this two drops. The two drops just kind of came together for an aggressive deck. I didn't have, remember this pack, I picked up three two drops. So I didn't really have this two drop centric deck before this pack, but now I think I might have a decent aggressive curve out deck that leverages some of the good two drops. Like I, I picked up one, two, three, four two drops this pack. And before this pack, I didn't really have any. So I, these other two drops were looking much worse. But now, thanks to the way that this pack shaped up, uh, my deck actually has a decent curve. Like, this is actually a really nice curve. And, uh, yeah, this deck actually really came together in this pack. It also makes Sure Strike much better if you have a decent curve. So I think this deck ended up, ended up quite solid. Uh, I don't really want to play Barging Sergeant. I already have two five drops that are pretty good. Leapfrog isn't excellent either. I mean, it's fine. It could be that I just end up with a more aggressive version. I play the Leapfrogs, cut some of the more... Uh, reactive spells so let's see grip creature separately this is definitely a 17 land deck i have a, a lot of uh jump start and a decent amount of expensive cards but uh yeah so we're definitely cutting devious cover up from this build i think and then i think we're going to cut the muse drakes they just don't really do what i like to do in this format and then for the muse drakes i mean these are the most likely to get out of back these three uh we can either add some leapfrogs or we can i mean we can maybe add some leapfrogs those are the these are the options. These are the only real playable cards in our sideboard. We're not really an Is It Locket deck. We don't really use our excess mana all that well. Um, I don't want another. Th if I wanted another three drop, I'd play a Leapfrog. Not if you go this Halberdier. I don't need another five drop. This deck actually really came together. Having these two drops is really nice. Um, Piston Fist Cyclops works pretty well with Direct Current. I can also play some more controlling games. <laughs> So I am at 22 cards here. I do like having two, the two counter spells. I think they add some. Uh... There we go. That's why I was like wondering why I couldn't see all the cards at once. Okay, they add some nice elements to this deck. Oh wait, where'd the display window go? Yeah, here it is. Um, hmm. I might. I think Piston for Cyclops is worth playing, but it's yeah, it's definitely worth playing. Uh, what card? Maybe I'll just add a Leapfrog. I, any card that I add from this pile is going to be probably my worst card. I don't want a Devious Cover-Up when I already have two other counter spells. My deck ended up way more aggressive than that, but I do like the Instant Suite. So, look at all the Instants I have. I have, um, this, and then the two Whisper Agents. So I have seven cards I can cast at Instant Speed, so my opponent really doesn't have any idea what I'm going to be doing uh, when I hold up mana, which is really nice. Um, really nice indeed. So I only have 14 creatures. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm playing Muse Drake. I, I can't bring myself to play that card, so I think I'm just going to slot in one Leapfrog. Could be pretty decent. And uh, sort by color. Keep in mind that these are both blue cards in my deck, and these are both red cards. So definitely have a decent number of both. Um, looking at my curve, I have a pretty similar number of two drops uh, of both colors. Uh, I have two double red cards here, two double blue cards here. I also have two double blue cards here. I think I am going to add one more island. Um, well, definitely not adding any of those. I'm going to add one more island to this deck because uh, the, while I do want to be able to cast my direct currents, I have a lot of instants. Like, I have the Disdainful Stroke. I also have the Whisper Agents that I want to be able to cast. I'd rather be able to cast a Whisper Agent on turn three than a direct current on turn three, if that makes sense. I think this deck is definitely a 17 land deck, but I think it's a very good take on Is It. The deck really came together there at the end. I'm definitely happier to play, is it like aggro-ish? I mean, this deck can definitely play a mid-range game pretty well with certain draws, like a Chemister's Insight draw. Uh, but I'm very happy with how the de this deck ended up because it, I think it maximizes the Vidalka Mesmerists decently well. And it just has some pretty solid two drops going on, some decent synergy. So I'm ha I'm excited to take it through a league. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to do it. Eh, maybe I want to make one change. I, maybe I want another Leapfrog over a Fresh Face Recruit. Seven, five. No, I'd rather just. Yeah, that's going to do it for the deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you stay with me for the matches. Hello, 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 and welcome to round one here, playing against Dregsizu7, and we won the die roll, which is really good for our deck. So we're going to go first, definitely keeping this hand, 
It doesn't have a three drop creature right now, but Ionize can do some good work. We have Watcher in the Mist, we have a two drop, so I think this is a definitely a solid hand. We have lands of both of our colors, and our opponent's on a mulligan to five. So uh, starting off, pretty solid. I think we are decently favored here. That's one of the other things I like about having a decent aggressive-ish deck, because you can punish the slow starts a little bit better, uh, or the decks that mulligan. I don't actually mind drawing Second Mountain. It turns on uh, Direct Current as a draw. That being said, in this deck, once I have two red sources, two blue sources, I'm never going to play any lands past turn five. That was very unfortunate. That was very fortunate. Okay. So uh, that was a very good draw, because now if he attacks in, I can flash in Whisper Agent and trade, potentially. I can also represent Ionize for if he has a big spell. Definitely going to at least attempt the Whisper Agent play. Especially because Surveil's pretty good. That would have definitely been a dead draw. I want to kill it before he can threaten to pump it. I'm definitely not double blocking because then a combat trick gets him even worse. Fresh face recruit, I don't mind it. Healer's Hawk I do kind of mind, but I have the Watcher in the Mist to kind of destroy it. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so good. Definitely going to just start attacking. I'm not going to be able to block. But now I can just get a... I played the wrong land. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I was going to be able to play Electromancer and Ionize, but I screwed it up by uh, tapping wrong. I mean, by playing the wrong land. Oh, I'm so bad. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I'm not bad. That was just, like, pure. I thought, I yeah, I had, I had my lands wrong in my head. Um, but if he casts a 4-drop here, I'm going to just be, yeah, I'm kicking myself here. It's not the end of the world, but it's pretty close to it. If I could have, oh my gosh, these are two great cards. Um, let's go top, but we, don't, we want the Lava Coil on top. We definitely want to be drawing spells here, so we're going to keep both on top. That was definitely a really, really costly error. If I could have countered Parhelion Patrol, I think we just win the game on the spot. As it is, we could definitely still lose. But it's still unlikely. Um... So, what do I think he has? Hmm. I'm going to be killing... I think we just double block this guy. No, we don't. We're just going to take it. We're going to take six damage here. We don't want to expose our Watcher in the Mist to a combat trick. Next turn, we'll have it up with Counterspell to protect it. Legion Guild Mage. Okay, perfect. And Crater Maker. Okay. So, he bluffed me pretty much, but... So we're going to play our Mesmerist. Then we are going to Lava Coil the Legion Guild Mage. And then we are going to attack. So yeah, we could definitely lose this game because of uh, not being able to counter the Bar Healing Patrol on time. Also, he made a very good, smart attack there. Um, he bluffed past me pretty well. I'm going to block like this, um, I think, I think this is a good block. Because mm. I could just go to seven, I could take six, go to five. Next time I draw sure strike. Yeah, I think I'm going to block like this. This way he can either use his Goblin Crater Maker to get a 2 for 1 and I eat his guy, or, uh, yeah. Wow, I'm very disappointed with the way I played this. Man, just playing one land incorrect, that's the thing. It's going to be very punishing. And luckily I uh, didn't get too punished here, but I now have to find a removal spell for the Healer's Hawk. Which is quite unfortunate. It's really an unnecessary spot to put myself. <sighs> Man, it happens though. Sometimes you play the wrong land, you just have to bounce back. Just keep in mind though that I could have easily won this game if I uh, played it a little bit better. 
and I wouldn't have been able to, been able to counter that if I hadn't, so. But I, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have still had my 3-4 in play. He wouldn't have been able to attack me, but. Okay, so I have 6 power on board. He's gaining 2 a turn, so I'm on a 4-turn clock. He's on a 3-turn clock. So I am winning this race, especially thanks to this sure strike. I also have a lot of good draws in the deck still. Well, now I need to draw this turn. That was a draw. It keeps me alive. So if I use my sure strike now, or does it give me extra outs? I think it does. So I hit him here, he goes to six, he goes to eight. Oh uh, no, yeah. I'm gonna be direct currenting his guy anyway, probably. So I have quite a few outs here. I can draw direct current, I can draw And that's game. Okay. I messed it up. Rats! Very, very disappointed in myself there. I could have definitely won that. I'm going to run it back, though. I don't think anything really changes here. That was just purely me playing the wrong land that one turn. Because if I'd cast, if I'd countered his Parhelion Patrol there, um, he wouldn't have been able to mentor up the Hawk, and I would have been able to just block it. There was also that turn where I was going to play around a combat trick, and he didn't have a combat trick. He had two creatures instead, and he was just going to be willing to trade off the uh, Crater Maker. But yeah, that, that was a definitely a painful game to lose. It's, it's hard because, I mean, I just legitimately clicked the wrong land. I mean, my long-term plan was clearly not to Electromancer not cast my Counterspell. Wow, that hurts. Really hurts. I definitely would have won that game if I'd made that play. Because the Parhelion Patrol just got him a bunch of extra damage. We're going to keep this hand. We have both of our colors. We have a removal spell. We obviously don't want to keep drawing lands, but yeah. Also, if we ever draw a direct current in this matchup, I don't think he can win. Which is something. I don't even, like, the lands aren't even, like, a huge deal because I have a lot of jumpstart spells. We're not going to Lava Coil his Healer's Hawk because he has a lot more scary creatures that we care about more. Like the uh, Boros, Re Boros Challenger, I think it's called. Crash Face Recruit. Sure. Do, do, do. I think if we draw Direct Current, the game is just over. Like, in a lot of scenarios. Just because we can kill two of his guys for a pretty efficient rate. We are definitely going to save the Lava Coil for an extra turn. Next turn, if we don't draw something relevant, we might have to use it, though. It's not good for me, but I'm just going to keep the status quo here. <sighs> wow. Things are looking grim, folks. I mean, I've drawn one spell this game. So, and it was a combat trick, which was pretty useless. Oh, man. It's very rough. Now I have to use it. I'm using it on him because... Um, 
it makes my clock one turn less. This has been a very, very rough game, though. I kept a five lander on the play, and I drew li literally five lands, I think. It's rough. It happens, though. Remember, opponent does have the Gravitic Punch in his deck, so, uh, yeah, I could definitely just be dead to that. Yep, that's a combination of cards, and I'm dead. Let's just see what was on top. Maybe we were supposed to cast this main phase to look for a direct current. That could have definitely been a correct play. Yikes. Oh, man. That's justice, though. I should have won game one, so I lose this game. Hopefully, uh, you learned something. Uh, not, I mean, yeah, I misclicked my, my land, and it cost me the match. So hopefully you don't do that in your matches, and I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. Uh, hopefully it was helpful to you, especially the draft portion, because I think the draft portion ended up pretty well for us. And obviously, the games, we could have definitely won game one. It's not going to guarantee that we win the match, uh, but it would have been really nice. So, yeah, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.